Good morning, Pat. Uh, this is Jack Lifton. It's April 15th, American Tax Day, so excuse us if we're a little distracted. Um, I've, I've, I've uh, got a couple of questions for you. You, you have a, a plant in Kingston, Ontario. With a, When I was there, you said it was an 80-ton capacity. Is that correct? That's correct, 80-ton. Mm -hmm. The thing is, the the market in North America for separated rare earths to make metals and alloys and then magnets is the United States. Okay, the critical minerals uh, that we need uh, are mostly in Canada. Okay, the the processing at this point in the United States of of the higher atomic number of rare earths, the critical ones for rare permanent magnets, is basically non-existent. So if I understand correctly, you are at this point in time in Kingston able to process tons, not, not, a, not hundreds or thousands, but perhaps tens of tons of heavy rare earths if you have the feedstock. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, the, the plant in Kingston can produce tens of tons. And uh, we've got the real estate there to actually, um, you know, the, the front end of that process is where you have to remove a lot of yttrium. And so if we actually expand the commercial demo plant to get a little more yttrium out up front, just by building one more rapid SX uh, machine, as we call it, we can pull the yttrium out and then get actually hundreds of tons of material out of the Kingston facility. So with a modest investment, we can go from tens of tons currently, which is really for demonstration purposes, so we can get to a larger deployment in Louisiana, as you know. But um, with a modification to the plant in Kingston now, we can get to hundreds of tons. Okay, now that's that's very important and interesting because there is no other heavy wear of separation capability or capacity in North America that I'm aware of, okay? You're it. So the interesting thing to me, and I'm speaking for myself now, I'm not disclosing any secrets, okay, is that the uh, U.S. Department of Defense is commissioning or building a 2,000-ton magnet plant in in uh, South Carolina. That's the capacity of the plant, as I understand it. And that'll require, uh, if, the, if it were all uh, neodymium iron boron type magnets, it would require 667 tons of NDPR, okay? Which, which is above your current capacity, I understand that. But only, I think, 20 to 30 tons maximum of dysprosium and terbium, which is within your capability. Now, you and I both know that there's a panic going on in Washington, and they, they want product tomorrow. And when you answer them that it, if you had mentioned this in 2015, we'd be ready to supply you tomorrow, okay? But the fact is, Pat, that if you have the fee, you could probably right now supply the necessary dysprosium turbium. Is that correct? If I'm yeah, you know, you're, 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 yeah, your numbers are correct. That's that's right. And um, you know there are players out there obviously focused on the NDPR. Mm -hmm. We're not venturing into the uh, you know worrying about the NDPR. That's being taken care of by other players that are out there like MP and a few others. But right. the difficult job of getting to the turbium and dysprosium. Uh, that that that's where the margin is, and that's where the opportunity is. And you're right, intensive tons to support that South Carolina plant that's being built. Uh, we could support that plant. Okay. And um, so we're yeah we're we're we've we've ventured into the um, you know in fact we started our program with the DOD with IBAS, um, and it's focused on heavy wear of processing for that very reason. And um, yeah, we're we're there, Jack. Well, the the. The real issue becomes feedstock. And, and for a moment, I'd like to talk about Samarin, okay? And uh, it, it, it's been mentioned that uh, Samarium has not been commercially produced in the United States for, for good reason. It, it had no economic value. I mean, it, it's been selling for 3 or $4 a kilogram, okay? However, its, it's value for national security in the United States is uh, open-ended because Samarium cobalt magnets are, are the magnets of choice for aircraft. 
because they, they can resist electromagnetic radiation. What does that mean? If, if a nuclear weapon is detonated close enough to the plane to, to, fry, the elect, to fry the electronics, uh, a samarium cobalt magnet might survive, although I, I wonder about the pilot. But that, that doesn't matter. Maybe we're talking about a drone. So the, the point is, they've been using these magnets for quite some time, and they, they are restricted to only one, or, well, one supplier in the United States at this point in time. But we don't produce samarium. And samarium isn't really rare. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's probably the most prevalent of the rare earths after, after cerium, lanthanum, neodymium, praseodymium. It's the fifth most common. Okay. And the problem is nobody refines it because it had no economic value. And you, you're, you could, uh, if you had a cut uh, from, from a supplier that contained the samarium, and, and for example, the residue from the Linus processing in, Australia, in, in Malaysia contains quite a bit of samarium, okay? You could produce that samarium, could you not? Yeah, no, you're you're spot on, and uh, you're right. The three, four dollars a kilogram. Some people look at it and go, "Well, that's not viable." The quantities on a national level are are not that high, so it's not viable. But when it becomes a matter of national defense, mm -hmm. and if you have a system that you can set up, uh, and I, I mentioned earlier about uh, you know the the bespoke or custom nature of our ability of the Rapid SX system to turn on and turn off, and using a, a 21st century digital manufacturing techniques. I mean, it, it, it's just a smart way to go and say, hey, we'll get you samarium. Maybe not at $3 a kilogram, but we'll get you what you need for uh, national defense uh, needs. And, and, and you're right, uh, you know, it's not only the radioactivity, but the high temperature coercive nature of samarium cobalt uh, magnets allows it to be the, the choice for DOD. And, and it's actually why, you know, that it's why China restricted samarium on its most recent, um, you know, volley against the U.S., like you, you, you want to pick a fight? Well, let's pick a fight with this one. Well, to look at the details, we can get Sumerian uh, as as a, as a con as part of the concentrate. Okay, from Linus, for example. Okay, but we have in the United States at this point in time no capability to separate it commercially. Okay, now you have that capability already in Kingston, do you not? That's correct. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, again we refer to it as a uh, a chemical knife, so mm -hmm. it's just a matter of doing the appropriate splits to get to the split that gets you to Samaria. But yes, absolutely. Okay, so so really, in a rational world, you you would be uh, the prom date for the Department of Defense. Okay, uh, and and so. I'm I'm wondering because you and I both know that the, the panic mode is on in Washington. They've got to have this stuff right away, and and you're there saying um, we have you have identified quite a few sources of feedstock. Obviously, you mentioned that uh, recently, and um, they have a, a relationship with Linus for uh, which would include quite a bit of samarium concentrate. Okay. So, Pat, what's holding up the, why aren't they air, air freighting, or as they say, helicoptering you uh, bales of money and dropping them on Kingston or wherever you are? Well, as you know, the, uh, uh, the pure restriction on Samarium just came out on Sunday, yeah. where it was, now, now you won't get any of it. And, and your allied countries, Japan and Germany, they won't get it either. And um, so that, that just happened a couple of days ago. And, uh, of course, the question we got asked on the weekend was, what can you do in 30 days? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, really, it, it, it's like it's, a, like it's an app on your phone. Sure, it's an app on your phone. You can pull up and do whatever you want. But you just update the app here. What do you want? Samarium, we got it. I mean, you have to put a couple of pieces in place in order to make it happen. But you're right. Uh, Linus does have the ability with uh, some Samarium, as does someone like Aluka. Uh, they, they've got Samarium and, and we can get our hands on Samarium, split it out and we can make it available to the DOD. Can we do it in 30 days? Probably not 30 days, but I tell you what, it wouldn't be too much after that. Well, their magnet plant isn't ready and their metal plant isn't ready. So, uh, you, you have more than 30 days. 
Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a key point. You know, the uh, here we are working on refining and processing and trying to get our, our volumes up and, and focus on a number of different materials. But the whole supply chain has to work together. You've got to have the feedstock. You've got to have the metal alloy and the magnet make. And they've all got to be, you know, same place, same time, let's go. Uh, you've been you've been preaching that for years, and it's very true. Well, I, I now use the banana split analogy. And my answer when you want a banana split is yes, we, but we have no bananas. <laughs> so uh, th- this is, th- I think that this is all going to come to a head now be- because of the of what's going on. And the only thing I'd like to throw in the mix is this. People should not think that Japan and Korea and the EU uh, think every day, what can we do to help uh, the United States? I don't think they're thinking that way at all. So the fact that these raw materials can be sourced from, the, you know, for example, from Southeast Asia and, and Brazil and Africa, it's not like it's we have a golden path. It's only us. There's a competition going on. So I think the it would behoove the American establishment in Washington to understand that we have to get actively involved in 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 the sourcing of the decisions, you know, for the raw material. That's such, such a key point, you know, because the the refining and the processing and the, the downstream, uh, you know, product making it doesn't happen at the extraction site, right? You know, it, it, so it's a real chess game. And and when you start putting up tariff wars, that combat against small countries in Africa or, or take a strike at Australia or, you know, uh, uh, want to have a, a balance with, with Brazil. I, wow. You're, you're just, you're not thinking about it properly, in my opinion. And when it comes to critical minerals, you've got to be able to get critical minerals from the sources where they are and then bring them home for refining and processing and downstream manufacturing. I mean, and, it, yeah. and it's, it's a complicated, uh, you know, supply chain, as you know. This this is this is the real challenge now, and my only concern is that the emphasis be maintained. Okay, because uh, governments are notorious for switching topics, and 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 saying, "Oh yeah, but you know, forget it. that's that problem is solved." So n- next problem, okay, and and usually the solution is that there was no solution, so they just dropped the problem. Okay. And, and and we're heading into the, really, uh, I don't know how long China will restrict export. China's export, you know, the, in the details, for example, says that they don't want to sell anything outside of China for dual use. That means military as well as consumer, okay? Well, um, as you know, the uh, United States Department of Defense doesn't care about the consumer economy, not one bit. Okay, so if they're cut off, what they want to do is grab whatever they can. The consumer co- economy will be left out, you know, just to dry on the line. And I don't think the American consumer economy, I'm talking industry that uses wear permanent magnets, I don't think they're aware of the fact that they're a um, considered a, excuse the expression, bastard stepchild in Washington. Who cares? Maybe Department of Commerce cares, maybe. But Defense Department has has the ability to make fast appropriations, and so this is a real uh, mess. <laughs> okay, and it's not going to be resolved anytime soon, easily. And and the Canadian government has to understand that yes, it has the resource cards, but Washington has the market demand card. So they have to work together. They cannot be antagonistic, or this whole thing's going to just go nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, you know that this is one situation where neighbors, north south, we've got to work together. And um, you know, you, you've commented of late, and and I've made the comment too that uh, you know, looking to make a critical mineral deal with Ukraine or or take over the assets of Greenland or that that's not where the solution is and uh and, and you know the technology we're focused on and developing is key because as i've mentioned many times you don't have to control the actual mineral resource in order to control it you've got to control the refining and processing and so we're uh we're doing that but but when you control the refining and processing you better have friends around the world that can bring your critical memos to the doorstep for processing if you're going to you know antagonize and and pick fights with everyone it's going to be a tough road. So, 
let me, Pat, thank you. Let, let me draw a temporary conclusion to our chat by saying I look forward in, I guess, three weeks or four weeks to hearing you tell us at the Critical Minerals Institute conference in Toronto how you solve all of our problems. Okay, I can't wait. Well, we are the prom, we are the prom date, so stay tuned. Thank you. <laughs> And, and thank you very much for talking to us. We really look forward to hearing more about this. Thanks, Jack.